here from the district library and adult services librarian here. And I have the pleasure of reading Running with Scissors by Augustine Burroughs, published in 2002. Challenged, it was challenged in our very own backyard at Howell High School, made national news in 2007 when it challenged this book's strong sexual content. In response to a request from the president of the Livingston Organization of Values and Education, or L-O-V-E, the county's top law enforcement official reviewed the book to see whether laws against distribution of sexually explicit materials to minors had been broken. The Livingston County prosecutor is quoted as saying, quote, after reading the books in question, it is clear that the explicit passages illustrated a larger literary, artistic, or political message and were not included solely to appeal to the prurient interests of minors. Whether these materials are appropriate for minors is a decision to be made by the school board, but I find that they are not in violation of the criminal laws. End quote. Something isn't right. My mother is standing in front of the bathroom mirror, smelling polished and ready, like a jean maté, dippity doo, and the waxy sweetness of lipstick. Her white handgun-shaped blow dryer is lying on top of the wicker clothes hamper, ticking as it cools. She stands back and smooths her hands down the front of her swirling psychedelic coochie dress, biting the inside of her cheek. Damn it, she says, something isn't right. Yesterday, she went to the fancy chopping block salon in Amherst with its bubbly, uh, I'm sorry, bubble skylights and ficus trees and chrome planters. Sebastian gave her a shag. That hateful Jane Fonda, she says, fluffing her dark brown hair at the crown. She makes it look so easy. She pinches her sideburns into points that accentuate her cheekbones. People have always said she looks like the young Lauren McCall, especially in the eyes. I can't stop staring at her feet, which she has slipped into treacherously tall red patent leather pumps. Because she normally lives in sandals, it's like she's borrowed some other lady's feet. Maybe her friend Lydia's feet. Lydia has teased black hair, boyfriends, and an above-the-ground pool. She wears high heels all the time, even when she's just sitting out back by the pool in her white bikini, smoking menthol cigarettes, and talking on her olive green princess telephone. My mother only wears fancy shoes when she's going out, so I've come to associate them with a feeling of abandonment and dread. I don't want her to go. My umbilical cord is still attached, and she's pulling at it. I feel panicky. I'm standing in the bathroom next to her because I need to be with her for as long as I can. Maybe she is going to Hartford, Connecticut, or Bradley Field International <laughs> Airport. I love the airport. The smell of jet fuel flying south to visit my grandparents. I love to fly. When I grow up, I want to be the one who opens those cabinets above the seats, who gets to go into the small kitchen where everything fits together like a shiny silver puzzle. Plus, I like uniforms, and I would get to wear one along with a white shirt and a tie, even a tie tag in the shape of an airplane wing. I would get to serve peanuts in small foil packets and offer people some small plastic cups of soda. Would you like a whole can, I would say. I love flying south to visit my grandparents, and I've already memorized almost everything these flight attendants say. Please make sure that you have extinguished all smoking materials and that your tray table is in its upright and locked position. I wish I had a tray table in my bedroom, and I wish I smoked. 
<laughs> just so I could extinguish my smoking materials. Okay, I see what's the matter, my mother said. She turns to me and smiles. Augustine, hand me that box, would you? Her long, frosted beige nail points to the box of Kotex maxi pads on the floor next to the toilet bowl. I grab the box and hand it to her. She takes two pads from the box and sets it on the floor at her feet. I notice that the box is reflected in the side of her shoe, like a small TV. Carefully, she peels the paper strip off the back of one of the pads and slides it through the neck of her dress, placing it on top of her left shoulder. She smooths the silk over the pad and puts another one on the right side. She stands back. What do you think? She says. She is delighted with herself. <laughs> it's as if she has drawn a picture and placed it on her internal refrigerator door. Neat, I say. You have a creative mother, she says. Instant shoulder pads. The blow dryer continues to tick like a clock, counting down the seconds. Hot things do that. Sometimes when my mother or my father comes home, I will go down and stand near the hood of the car to listen to it tick, moving my face so close to feel the heat. Are you coming upstairs with me, she says. She takes her cigarette from the clamshell ashtray on the back of the toilet. My mother loves frozen, baked, stuffed clams, and she saves the shells to use as ashtrays, stashing them around the house. I am fixated on the dryer. The vent holes on the side have hair stuck in them, small hairs and white lint. What is lint? How does it find hair dryers and navels? I'm coming. Turn off the light, she says as she walks away, creating a small whoosh that smells sweet and chemical. It makes me sad because it's the smell she makes when she's leaving. Okay, I say. The orange light from the dehumidifier that sits next to the wicker laundry hamper is looking at me, and I look back at it. Normally it would terrify me, but because my mother is here, it is okay except she is walking fast, has already walked halfway across the family room floor, is almost at the fireplace, will be turning around the corner and heading up the stairs, and then I will be alone in the dark bathroom with a dehumidifier eye. So I run. I run after her, certain that something is following me, chasing me, just about to catch me. I run past my mother, running up the stairs, using my legs and my hands, charging ahead on all fours. I make it to the top and look down at her. She climbs the stairs slowly, deliberately, reminding me of an actress on the way to the stage to accept her Academy Award. Her eyes are trained on me, her smile all mine. You, run up those stairs just like 